Power does what it wants. Power does what it wants. Power does what it wants. You hear that, folks? There are two sets of laws. One's for the police and one's for the ordinary citizen. Hey guys, Rogue Nation here with you. Coming to you um, today. Got a story I was wanting to do for a while now. And I thought I would have to um, get some records, pull some records. But uh, this guy was uh, gracious enough to provide a copy on his video. So I don't even have to pull the records. But what the story's about is our municipalities getting legal advice taking legal advice from a fifth grade educated prison paralegal named Mark Stout and it seems as if they are okay he professes to have sent his memo his memo real quick his memo consists of all the case laws they used against auditors before Mark invented his memo, right? So he took all the case law that the prosecutors were already using against auditors, put it into a memo, and then act like he did something, right? Because those wouldn't be the exact same cases they would use without his memo, right? So... He, uh, he likes to take credit for, uh, you know, stuff like that. And when the court case, when they read the case law that um, they used against auditors before Mark Stout was even on the scene, um, he'll say, they're using the exact same language as in my memo. Well, yeah, it's, it's called case law. They usually use the exact same language when they quote the exact same case law time and time again against auditors even before you were auditing mark or cop watching excuse me um but it, it fools a lot of people a lot of people really think that this guy's done something with his memo okay and um other lawyers like merb and uh paul carroll that's uh online and stuff that has seen his stuff has not been impressed but um, the majority of his followers, they're just not that bright. Um, so, and what we're going to do now is we're going to watch him go over this letter that he got back from old Stan Witten. Now, a lot of you... Folks will remember Stan Witten as the chief of police in Easley, South Carolina, where they recently passed that ordinance um, against filming in the buildings. Um, and that I, I currently have a, a suit against right now. I got to fill out some more paperwork and send it in. But um, so Mark sent them. A memo specifically Stan Witten the chief of police um, which as we know he's he's not the sharpest uh, knife in the kitchen set and uh, Stan thanks him for for showing him Adderley v Florida um, which it doesn't surprise me first of all that a cop doesn't know case law um, you know, there's a lot of case law out there, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, what surprises me is that these people are not vetting who's sending in this information. They're not even vetting the information, right? Um, and that damn lawyer they have up there for the city lawyer in Easley, um, he's just not that hip on it, so... Um, we've got a lawsuit going against them now, and a couple other people will be filing as well. But let's take a look at uh, at this letter that this the city got. Now, before he gets to the letter, he's going to go over a comment that one of his followers that can actually 
I guess, think a little bit is questioning him about his, his memo. But so he gets upset when anybody questions his memo or his track record. He's the best pro se, uh, you know, litigant ever. You know, no one's seen the things he's seen. He's from the roughest streets in America. He knows, you know, it's just, he's amazing. The guy's amazing. Quickly, and then we'll get on with the video. So this this person, the rabbit, they've been a hater on my channel ever since day one. I really I don't pay them any mind, but. And this is what the rabbit said. I think without anything to back it up that your memo did that, then you are taking credit you don't deserve. This video makes it sound like prosecutors can't do anything without you. Please present something other than they came to the same conclusion as me. Okay. Here's your something, stupid. All right? And you, do, I'm going to do this one time and one time only. All right? Here's your something, stupid. We, we won't get into my reply. Here is an email. Folks, I get these emails and I get these letters every day. I get letters and emails from government officials every day, not only thanking me for my memo, but uh, informing me that they have circulated my memo and that they are adopting my memo and that they are uh, using my memo as a foundation to issue ordinances and, and criminal statutes, all right? So what is it? When, when was this? September 28th, 2022, all right? This is just one I just pulled up. All right. Now, nobody's seen this before, but I want I want people to know. All right. These are the kinds of things that are that are these are the kinds of communications about my memos that are taking place. All right. From Stan Witten, and that's the chief of police of Easley, South Carolina. Now, folks, who everybody here knows I sent my memo to Easley, South Carolina and Easley, South Carolina passed an ordinance prohibiting frauding. Okay, I sent my memo to the chief of police, the city and town attorneys, the prosecutors, the mayor, everybody, okay? I sent my memo and an ordinance got passed in Easley, South Carolina, and then I get this from the chief of police. Hello, sir. My name is Stan Witten, police chief with the city of Easley, and if you don't believe this is him, look, here's his email address, easleypd.org, that's official. All right. Hello, sir. My name is Stan Witten, police chief with the city of Easley, and we are currently dealing with the Rogue Nation guy. I think you are aware of this guy as I have watched and appreciated your channel. George Metz has really set his sights and passion on the city of Easley, myself, the mayor and administrator. All this because one of his First Amendment auditors decided to come into Easley City Hall videoing. After cursing, I told that auditor he was about to go to jail if he didn't leave, at which point he left. According to George Metz, I violated his First Amendment right of free speech. He said last night, quote, this town is under my watch, end quote. After reading several court cases, in my opinion, I appreciate the fact that a U.S. District Court agrees that the First Amendment is not an absolute right. Now, we are getting inundated with phone calls, emails, and threats from him and his followers. I have more information that I believe is fueling his passion. Thanks for the education, especially with Adderley. And if anybody doesn't know what Adderley is, Adderley is a case. Adderley is a case that I give to government officials. Um, he doesn't give cases to government officials. These cases have been on the record. Um, probably since Mark had been born. You know, Adderley, I think, was in 91. So, I mean, Mark might have been 10, maybe. So, he, he doesn't give government officials these cases. Again, he's trying to take credit, okay, for putting the case laws that the prosecutors were already using into one memo. That's it. That's all he did, right? He took case law that they used against him in his case and put it in his memo, right? And that's the same case law that they used in a lot of other auditor cases that have come down the line, you know, because they're always trying to associate uh, free press with free speech, right? Um, 
and they're always trying to say that the restrictions are the same, but that's never been the case, right? Brandsburg v. Hayes, press, um, public, same right of access. It never said same right of access except for when you're in a limited public forum, except for when you're in a non-public forum. There is no exceptions. Press, public, same right of access. That's what it is. Um, so... But yeah, I, I just, I, I find it hard to believe um, that these guys are, are taking this guy seriously. Um, I mean, the guy's the, a, a, an ex-crack dealer, went to jail for, you know, prison for six years for dealing drugs. He celebrates the fact that he... Um, dropped out in the fifth grade, so, you know, says, oh, look how far I've come. And he got a prison paralegal certificate while he was in prison for six years. And he worked in the law library there. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what these people are thinking, man. But I do know that the more people he sends his memo to, the more litigants he brings up because whenever these guys pass these unlawful ordinances like um, easily South Carolina Punta Gorda um, there's a couple other places on my head list already to to go after um, that's that's what is gonna happen when you pass unconstitutional ordinances you're setting these guys up to be you know knocked down um, and that's just, you know, it is what it is. So, I mean, he's not actually hurting me, um, or hurting anybody because these ordinances will be overturned. They will be, uh, repealed and, uh, and it's going to do nothing in the long run, you know, for these people. But. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and uh, leave a comment down below on uh, what you think about these government officials, um, you know, taking uh, advice from this guy, you know, obvious scam artist here, so, alright, thanks guys.